Hello, beautiful viewer. Today, we're talking about television, or more specifically, streaming services. So if you like television, and more specifically, streaming services, you're gonna wanna make sure you hit like, hit that bell, subscribe, and most importantly, share the video, because that enters you in to win one of 10 subscriptions to Netflix, uh, passwords. 10 passwords to my sister's Netflix account. I still have to check with her, but streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, once a paragon I'm sorry. of convenience and consumer friendly services. In 2019, they're about to become a very controversial subject. So allow me to welcome you once more, you gorgeous viewers, to the official review of streaming services in 2019. Brought to you by Daniel Fiala, the channel that invented reviewing things that do not need to be reviewed. Hey, Daniel. Sure. Show back Sim Tuzel from the YouTube channel, Tuzel. What, what are you doing? What I was doing? wondering if you have a minute. Get, get, get out of here! It's easy to forget nowadays that America was not always the utopia of content that it is today. It's so simple to look back on those earlier generations, like the greatest generation who fought Hitler, or Gatsby's generation of the Roaring Twenties. We all just assume that King Henry VIII procrastinated doing his kingly homework just like we procrastinate our peasant homework by watching Game of Thrones or binge watching Bojack Horseman. The thing is, my younger viewers, this was not always the case. In fact, as early as when your grandparents were teenagers, they had to buy individual DVDs of each season of The Walking Dead. They couldn't afford to quit watching in the middle of season four like we do because they'd already ponied up the cold hard cash. They would have already paid for every episode of that season. Heck, you assume someone as important as Abraham Lincoln would have been able to catch up on all the latest Marvel movies before going to go see Endgame from the comfort of his home. Well, that's simply not true, idiot. He had to get his ass out of bed and drive all the way down to the movie theater to watch any, any shows, any movies, any of them. Even the ones that came out last year. I think I made my point, even if most of us still remember the time when we had to make sure our DVRs were ready to record our favorite shows if we ever had a chance to watch them. And what happens when you accidentally click on a rerun of the show to record it, and not the new episode. Then, you miss the new episode. So what do you do? You set to record every single episode that airs on your network. All of a sudden, your DVR fills up like that, because 13 different channels are rerunning old episodes of Scrubs. I'm no Superman. It was horrible. I would have wished cholera on the entire population before I had wished that upon them. But then, humanity's darkest hour surrounded by the enemy of slightly inconvenient to consume content. A savior peeked over the hill. A tear in everyone's eye as they saw Netflix on his white horse. And we're still not sure whether the Calvary that followed Netflix was really a good thing or not. At first, Netflix was pretty inconvenient too. They'd send you DVDs in the mail and you had to keep a queue for what DVDs you wanted next. If you wanted a whole season of something but you only received two DVDs at a time, they'd only send you two DVDs of that season at a time and then you'd have to send them back and then they'd send you, you know, the next DVD for that season. But you're watching it all pretty quick. You're trying to binge. This was the pre-binge era, but things were improving. They were they were getting there. Because within a few years, they added the world's first real online movie streaming platform as a compliment to their DVD to the door services. Initially, it was a free compliment to those services, and later they separated the charges. People weren't sure if the streaming services was gonna be worth a whole separate cost from the DVD services. Because people are idiots. It wasn't long before everyone had binged all six seasons of Lost. Finally, they understood why their pretentious friends were mad and confused in high school. And they knew that this was worth an additional $6.99. And after Netflix, there was an idea to gather together a group of elite television networks to see if they could become something more. An internet-based alternative to cable for another low monthly price. That was, uh... 
Uh, th that one was Hulu. And so we entered the most pro-consumer era of entertainment availability that humanity has ever seen. Between Netflix and Hulu, we basically had it all for about 20-ish dollars a month. You had to pay two separate bills to accomplish this, but 20 was a lot prettier than the 60 we had been sitting on before with cable. The cable companies were so anti-consumer, a literal legalized cartel happily screwing us all over, and they finally got a big middle finger from all of us. But now we're entering a different era because all those same networks saw the success that Netflix had. Even though these networks owned a major percentage of Hulu themselves, they didn't feel like the slice of a bigger pie would be quite as tasty as a whole pie to themselves. They got greedy and they started thinking that they didn't want to share any of that sweet, sweet Bob's Burgers money with the jerks who made agents a shield. So CBS screws off and makes CBS All Access, tells the world's nerds that they can't watch the new Star Trek unless they pony up another uh, nine bucks a month. Fox made FX Now and told the world Simpsons fans that they could only get their fix here. This whole time HBO's been sleeping and it hasn't been a big deal. They were always a separate charge in addition to cable. So a lot of normal folks never bothered. And then Game of Thrones happened. So a lot of us normal folks all of a sudden bothered. I for one was not going to pay a cable company 50 bucks for a package and then 20 more for HBO. No sir. So I did what most people did and illegally downloaded it. Which was a pain itself because you're risking viruses and emails from HBO. So when HBO finally let us pay them directly for a streaming service, it was actually a pro-consumer. After that, DC Comics started their own streaming services. Because why not? Then Disney said that Star Wars was coming to one place, baby. And there's a $7 cover charge to get in. And before that even happened, Disney bought Fox, which made Disney the majority shareholder of Hulu. And Hulu's pretty little neck is looking like it's on a chopping block. And with all this tomfoolery, where does that leave us? The eager viewers. Short answer. No, Daniel, no, Daniel, I do, relax. do not want to talk to you right now. I do, Daniel, no, I stop, never, stop I this. Don't talk to you ever. Daniel, I'm, I'm never simply wanna, trying to chat. Why I'm are you doing this? I'm filming a video. You always that is so always do this when I'm you're filming a video. Stop. Shoot. 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 Get out of here. Get out of here. <sighs> you're not cool. So we used to be able to flip between channels for about $50 a month. Now we're going to be flipping between streaming services for the cost of nine-ish dollars a streaming service a month. Studies show that internet piracy is already making a comeback because while we're willing to pay for content that's convenient, we're also willing to steal it once paying for it becomes inconvenient. Now I'm not condoning piracy, but uh, whatever floats your boat. I think the negatives are pretty clear. I've gone over a few and here's my list of them. But it wouldn't be a proper review if we didn't give streaming services in 2019 their day in court. So let's talk about some of those positives. Why won't you leave? Shooing me away actually does nothing. I just left to be polite. Be polite now! Get, get out of here! If you think I'm going to apologize for stealing your video format, then you... <laughs> no, 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 no. You think I'm mad about you doing my video series? I'm not mad, Daniel. I'm thrilled. Really? Yes! It's not like I'm making them anymore, right? I'm just disappointed that you haven't been over to visit me in so long. I know. I should have stopped by to see you more. Don't feel bad, Daniel. That's, that's why I'm here. We're visiting now. Let's make the most of it. I was just about to talk about some of the positives of streaming services in 2019. Do you got anything to say about that? Of course! And that's because we still haven't talked about competition yet. A service or a product always becomes at its best when it's being challenged by competitors trying to offer something better. And for a while, Netflix was this uncontested champion at the top of all the streaming services. That was the honeymoon thing. And then Netflix got lazy. Have you seen all the bullshit TV shows that they're just pumping out? I will happily die before I watch Insatiable. But things are starting to change. More and more streaming services are trying their best 
to convince us that there is something better than the boss baby back in business. In fact, it's said that Jeff Bezos specifically bought the rights to the upcoming Amazon Prime's TV show The Lord of the Rings to directly compete with HBO's Game of Thrones. That's going to be the most expensive entertainment property of all time, expected to have a budget of a billion dollars. However, let's not be naive. This could be a major disgusting flop. But one billion sure sounds cool. And a figure this big only exists because of the competition that is slowly starting to take place between streaming services. Don't you think, my old friend? Some decent points. Thank you, Jean Maxine. Anyway, I give every damn entertainment company having their own streaming services in 2019 a 4 out of 10. I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. There you have it. Now if you feel like you'd enjoy more of this style of review, only a little less handsome, then consider checking out my friend Tuzel's channel. There's a link in the description and you can get a lot more of that comedic goodness. But before you check him out, make sure to click the subscribe button on this very page. There's a a lot of buttons that I would love you to click, like the um, like the like button, the bell icon. You can click a bunch of different buttons in in the comment bar, and then and then click the comment <coughs> button. And as always, I I love you. You two's out. It's okay, Dan. You know I should have visited you, man. I understand. Uh, that's a problem that I'm gonna fix right now. Goodbye, friend. If I had a nickel for every time I think I did something stupid Then I'd have a shit on the nickels That shit was stupid, I run it back, take it back, hold it back, take it back, run it back, run it back, run it back I'ma kill the fucking white whale, I'ma give the dick a damn heart attack If I had a nickel for every time I think I did something dumb I'd be as rich as a man with no kids and a decent income I'd be rich as this shit, call me young rich, you bitch I'm the nun for Macaulay, the coke and the kid I've been stuck on the sea on the huff for a taste Looking for love but I only got, only got